I'm Dr. Sarah Shu, and thanks for joining me again. In one of my recent videos, I received a comment with this video request. Andre XJ2MB wrote, can you please make a video talking about tretinoin and other retinoids, as well as how they should be used exactly? Absolutely, and thanks for the great suggestion. First, let's look at the basics and then get into the details together. Retinoids are cousins of vitamin A that are commonly used to treat acne and signs of aging. In my mind, I split retinoids into two big categories, over-the-counter and prescription only. The specific members of each of these categories are going to depend on what country you live in, but I'll speak to what's available in the U.S. In the over-the-counter category are retinol, retinal, and adapalene. Adapalene used to be prescription only, but it was approved in 2016 specifically at the 0.1% strength as an over-the-counter drug for acne. The prescription-only retinoids are adapalene at the higher strength of 0.3%, tretinoin, triferritine, and tazeratine. The prescription-only retinoids are stronger and much more rigorously studied, especially for their FDA-approved indication of acne. Over-the-counter retinols and retinals are widely used for the treatment of acne and premature aging, but high-quality evidence supporting their effectiveness is actually pretty limited. Some scientific articles supporting their effectiveness have been published, but I was surprised to see how thin this evidence was. If you're interested in reading more about this topic, I linked a summary on it below in the description. Moving on, before I get into how I use retinoids, first I wanted to mention two categories of people who probably should not use a retinoid. Number one, people who are pregnant or nursing, please don't use them. And number two, people with very sensitive or rosacea prone skin might not tolerate a topical retinoid, but your mileage may vary on this one. Now, I'll tell you how I personally incorporate retinoids. There are a lot of good strategies out there, but this is just what I do. Whenever I start a new retinoid, I generally apply them only at night. And the reason for this is that some retinoids, including tretinoin, can degrade when exposed to UV radiation. I've linked more information on this down below. I start by applying a thin layer of moisturizer, and then on top of my moisturizer, I use just a pea-sized amount of retinoid, and I first distribute it by dotting it onto my forehead, nose, cheeks, and chin. Then I take some time to spread it evenly, and while I do this, I generally stay away from my eyelids when applying because eyelid skin and your eyes can get irritated pretty easily from using retinoids. I know that some people do a retinoid sandwich and put another layer of moisturizer on top of their retinoid, but I do well with, I guess, an open face sandwich. For the first two weeks, I use a retinoid just two times a week. Then I'll choose three days a week, like Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and then I'll keep increasing by one application every two weeks until eventually I'm able to use it every night if I can. The reason for my slow increase is that irritation from retinoids is delayed. It takes about three to four days to show up and then it gets worse for a few days even if you were to stop the retinoid. The biggest mistake that people make when they use retinoids is that they get too excited, they wanna use it every single day, and then by day three or four, their skin is painful, peely, and itchy, so they stop the retinoid because they assume that they're allergic to it. Then even though they've already stopped their retinoid, their irritation will still get worse over the next few days because of this delayed irritation effect. Here are some extra tips for people with very sensitive skin. Number one, wait 30 minutes after washing your face before applying the retinoid. Go ahead and apply your moisturizer immediately after washing your face, but wait 30 minutes after that to put your retinoid on. And number two, don't force your skin to accept a daily retinoid. Some people, it doesn't matter how slowly they try to increase their retinoid, their skin will get red, peel, or burn with frequent use, so just do whatever your skin tolerates. Some people watching this video might be wondering which rec retinoid I recommend. I think that there is some trial and error involved in finding the right retinoid for you, but I hope this is a helpful starting point. If you see a dermatologist or other dermatology provider, I would consider starting tretinoin at its lowest strength of 0.025% or adapalene at its prescription strength. If you don't see a dermatologist and your skin is not particularly sensitive, I would start with the strongest over-the-counter retinoid that's available, which is adapalene 0.1%. I mentioned earlier that anti-aging and actually even anti-acne evidence for retinols and retinals is pretty weak. The anti-aging evidence for adapalene 
at the over-the-counter strength is weak as well, but it is the strongest over-the-counter retinoid that's available, and it is the most likely to improve your acne and photoaging among the over-the-counter retinoids that are out there. Just as an FYI, over-the-counter adapalene products that are marketed for acne aren't the most exciting looking products out there, so you're not going to get a high-end experience with these. Now, let's talk about people with sensitive skin who can't tolerate adapalene or prescription retinoids. Although the evidence isn't as strong, that's when I would consider using something like a retinol or a retinal. My recommendations for these people would be something like Avenz Retinol Intensive Cream, and for people who are more cost conscious, um, Beauty of Chosun's Revive Eye Serum, which contains retinol. Although this is marketed as an eye serum for people with sensitive skin, I would use it on my face the same way that I described earlier. To recap, Prescription retinoids are among the best studied, if not the best studied topical ingredient for anti-aging purposes, and it's a helpful ingredient for the treatment of acne as well. While they can be irritating to use, I hope you've learned a few tips to make them more tolerable. Thanks for watching and see you next time.